Hey, what's up? It's Tati and back with another review, this time ROH TV. And this is the first episode since their hiatus back in 2021. And I am so, so glad that Tony Khan has uh, relaunched ROH and they are off on a great start. Now, I don't think I'm really going to go into like every detail to every match, but I'll you know talk about some things that i did enjoy from this show and what i think will help work things out um we do start off this show with slim j versus uh, mark briscoe which was a great way to open the show uh, I really did enjoy that match that got everyone pumped up. You know how uh, Mark Briscoe has this larger than life persona um, that people can really get behind. And it was a great match. And I love to see that he's using the Jade Driller as a uh, finisher now. Um, so only thing I think that is um, a little bit confusing here is... Um, People who are wrestling in ROH, are they part of AEW or vice versa? Um, it's really hard to tell, you know, because recently they said that um, Mark Briscoe was, you know, all elite. So it, will he be wrestling at both or not? So I do believe that um, AEW can really benefit if they kind of try to separate um both rosters have these guys stay at roh and then have the other group of guys at aew this will definitely help with how people feel like the roster is bloated so we keep them separated for a while and only bring them together for like you know special shows or um maybe pay-per-views or whatnot um i think that would really help with um their large roster so something I really appreciated with this episode was that we got to see some New Japan guys here. So we did get to see Ozzy Open. They will be uh, on the show next week. And we did have a match for the New Japan Pro Wrestling World TV Championship uh, with Jack Sabre Jr. versus Blake Christian. And oh my gosh, this match was really, really great. I absolutely enjoyed this. I feel like um, this is definitely the way to go with having some of these New Japan guys um, coming in. In, um, being part of ROH uh, you know going against some of these guys on these roster that will definitely um, open the eyes of people who watch New Japan and people who watch ROH so you can see other guys that you're not necessarily familiar with and I really enjoyed that match that's probably my favorite match of the night um, it was really um, enjoyable and you know what I think really appreciate the relationship that um, AEW has with New Japan and you know this is starting um, right after Revolution we're definitely going to start seeing a little bit more of New Japan guys uh, so we can get the setup for um, the Forbidden Door because I believe that would be the next pay-per-view I don't think that they should um, you know wait to get things started the sooner that they get these guys from new japan um coming out in either roh or aew the better so that these storylines could really have some time to play out so they don't feel rushed um anyway i do feel like um, this match with zach and blake was probably the match of the night is absolutely enjoyable so if you really want to see really good matches i do recommend uh watching this show Another one of my favorite matches of the night was Takesha versus uh, Josh Woods. This was a great match. Now, before this match, we do have Mark Sterling who has his clipboard. He got his documents and he's telling Takesha he needs to sign it so that they can basically avoid having this match and they'll pay him for his troubles. You know what I mean? And Takesha rips up the contract or whatever and just throws it up in the air and they have a match and this match was an absolute banger. Uh, I know like Mark Sterling and friends, they're coming off like they're always losing because you know they're heels or whatever and that's basically how they're booking these guys but they put on really great match. We even had Ari Davari who had a great match earlier in the night as well so I'm not really sure where they're going with things. I don't know if Takesha is going to be one of the regulars with ROH but for the first episode they did a tremendous job and they have great chemistry in the ring and both these guys can go and you already know like Takesha has been a fan favorite since he started with AEW and uh you know right off the bat 
the crowd is cheering for him and the only thing i do want to complain about with the crowd is that it's a more intimate crowd it's a smaller crowd compared to um you know other wrestling shows and i feel like with a smaller crowd we should be able to hear the fans more we should be able to feel a little bit more engagement with them because all that really plays out on camera one thing i hate is going to a wrestling show and people are just not being engaging now there were times that they were engaging uh you know with the show but at other times, I just felt like it was really, really quiet, especially when we had a lot of great matches this night. And you know what? I I, I loved it. I have no complaints with this show. It was actually two hours long. For some reason, I thought maybe, probably be like an hour or whatever, but it was two hours long, maybe a few minutes um, above two hours, and no commercials. And he had eight matches. So it really felt like you got match after match after match, and they really cut the bullshit here so there wasn't like any little filler moments everything was really to get everyone introduced back into um roh and i think they did a really great job for their first episode okay so i did take a look at back at this card and it was 10 matches not eight uh even though it is a lot more than we're used to seeing on a card uh this was actually still a pretty good show to watch uh, with a lot of great wrestling matches so let me just touch base a little bit on the women's matches so we did have the renegades versus madison rain in sky blue this match was not bad at times things did feel a little awkward and you can definitely see that sky blue has been um improving uh as far as her in-ring work um i do wish to see a little bit more personality with her um, but i can't really complain with this match um i do not find it to be as entertaining as the other matches with the guys unfortunately i still think that the women's uh matches needs a little bit more work now we also had lady frost versus willow nightingale and hmm I like Willow. I think she has like a really uh, bubbly personality that I like. However, I still see those things in the ring, those little rookie mistakes she makes in the ring. And she seems to be, sometimes she seems to be moving really, really slow and um, trying to find her footing in the ring. And to me, I think that's a big distraction, uh, at least for me. I can't say for everyone else. Um, this match was okay. Like I said, I do feel like the women matches need some work, but I didn't mind them on this card. Now on to the main event, which is Claudio Castagnoli versus A.R. Fox for the ROH World Championship. Now this match was A++. I really enjoyed it. Both these guys have two different styles that are just absolutely on fire. And then we have the crowd really loving both of these guys, even though we've been seeing a little heelish moments with Claudio, I still feel like you know the crowd is still behind both of these guys obviously coming into this match we know that the title is not going to change hands but they do put on a great show for the first episode so yes claudio ends up taking this win but i gotta say ar fox really really gave him a good fight i do recommend this match so my top uh matches of the night was definitely the main event to uh to Kesha versus Josh Woods and also Jack Saber Jr. versus Blake Christian. These three here were absolutely just amazing. A plus matches. I really enjoyed. I think I enjoyed the um uh match with Zach and Blake the most. Um I just really wasn't expecting to see them put on a really great show. I, I've seen a lot of matches from Zach and he's great but with blake they do have really great chemistry so i enjoy it so now here's the big question is buying the honor club a good buy up if it's up to me i would say yes it is 9.99 and i know there's a million streaming services out right now and it just seems like you got to pay for every single thing that's going on i do recommend at least trying it out for the first month because you know this is just the first episode and i did find it to be really enjoyable however we gotta keep that momentum going uh, for each episode especially with the pay-per-view 
being what a month away no actually the end of the month so it was on march 31st is a super card of honor pay-per-view so they have a couple of weeks to really build up some storylines or whatnot for the first night we don't really see that they're just really showcasing these talents in the ring which is absolutely perfect but i just feel like um starting next week we really need to get the ball rolling with these storylines so we can really have something solid going into this pay-per-view later on this month so yes i do think it is worth the buy and then next month you'll decide if it's something that you want to continue um to purchase i hope aew does have some type of um something where they can showcase um dynamite and rampage or whatnot as well that would also be a plus and also um i do kind of hope that to in order to help with the buy rates or whatnot for um the roh pay-per-views that they would have like i don't know discounts on the pay-per-views for members obviously i don't see them doing free pay-per-views with a 10.99 subscription at least a discount for the pay-per-views and they can also host the pay-per-views on this website so for people who just want to watch a pay-per-view they can possibly pay like full price but if you want a subscription you could get like a discount so that would be a good idea um for them to consider i really enjoyed this show i do recommend going ahead to check this out it was great guys thanks for watching my review i will be back tomorrow with rampage review